Welcome back. In this tutorial we're going to be setting up the following. We will be playing this standalone game here and it will be playing an opening cinematic and this cinematic In the darkness is skippable. Between the this stars, is just a side little note to show you off how that works, but the meat of the tutorial is going to be around this, which is focusing around the features and how to set up a loading screen. So we have a character over here and by pressing one we transition to a new level and before we get there we get this loading screen presented to us knowing that we're actually loading to a new level before it actually throws us into the new level. And we're making use of the async uh, loading screen free plugin for this so everything is perfectly available for everyone to make use of and I highly recommend this. So check it out. So here we are inside of Unreal Engine version 5.3 and this is using the third person template as sort of our base to uh, do something in. This will work regardless of which version, it might look a little bit different, that is all. But how to start off is we will first go to edit and we will go to plugins and we will find our plugin for this. So a sync loading screen plugin. So make sure to download it first from the Epic Marketplace, it's going to be free. And then you just restart when you have chosen the plugin and then you'll get back into the engine. The only two things I have done as preparation for this is now that we have restarted, yeah, we check the content drawer, I have created a folder called movies. Inside of this uh, folder I have imported a video clip and in addition to that I have also created a folder called loading screen where I have uh, imported a image file. In this case, it's a 1920 by 1080 uh, Warhammer image. So we're going to be using this as a sort of uh, uh, assets for the, the tutorial itself. So you can use whatever you want here, of course. So uh, getting started now that we have the plugin activated, what we can do is we can go to edit and project settings. And inside the project settings, we have now under the game category, we have an async loading screen uh, tab. And, and this grouping here uh, shows you what kind of information that you have available to you to set up some things. So first off, you have a startup loading screen. So this one is uh, where you probably want to have something like uh, your intro cinematics and stuff like that. So it sort of overlaps a little bit with how movies works here in projects. Uh, but what we can do here, for example, we can say that we want to add a movie here. In this case, I have created a movie called uh, WH40K. So this one will go directly to the movie folder and check which files are available there. So the file name without the extension will allow it to pick it up. And that's all that it needs. Uh, and, and now we should essentially be able to play this, but we need a little bit of setup. We need to create, uh, first of all, to have a second level to uh, transport to. So we'll go and uh, since we are loaded in now on the third person map right here, we can go and right click, uh, uh, click file and save current level as, and we can save this in the third person maps as well. We can say that this is supposed to be um, different level. So that's going to be our level name for this. So now that we're inside of the different level, we want to distinguish it a little bit from the previous level so that we see that it's different. So let's just uh, pick a different material for the floor so that we can easily see that this is indeed a different level. Something blue like that should be pretty obvious, right? Uh, now let's go back to our third person character map here. So we have that as our starting map, we save selected. Uh, from here we want to be able to uh, traverse to this other map. So we'll just put in some simple code to allow us to do that. So in this case we're going to be hooking in some information into our third person character. We're gonna be going to the event graph here. We're gonna be typing in keyboard and one, which allows us to press the one key and that will have something happen. In this case we're going to be happening, what we're gonna be having is we're gonna be opening a level by name and the level name we named different level. So this is uh, case sensitive, so make sure that you have it properly named. Uh, so if we were to run our game now, we can run around with our character, we can press uh, our key and we can travel to another map. Nothing is really happening. And the reason for this is that, uh, let's see, I want to stop. Let me stop. There we go. That's not what I wanted to do. There we go. Okay, so uh, 
The async loading screen plugin uh, will not kick in when you're playing in your editor. It will only play when you are uh, in either standalone or you have your built game essentially. So if we play a standalone game instead, we can see that the game loads up and it in starts the playing the video. And this video was the video that I had assigned in the, uh, in the startup. So if we just close this down for now, go to our project settings go to async loading screen so this is the movie that we assigned over here now it completed very quickly and the reason for that was because we have the auto complete when loading completes and since our level is very small it will complete pretty quickly so unchecking this will allow us to actually see the video further or longer or the whole sequence if you wanted to of course in the uh, darkness between another the checkbox stars, was also checked in which was that it's uh, allowing skipping so if we no point here, just click we will skip the video and get into the actual level itself so now that we are in the level we can press one and we saw that a, a, a screen with a white border appeared and that's essentially uh, the loading screen itself so it's not set up currently so we need to do that in project settings in async loading screen again we can go to our default loading screen so the startup loading screen is what you have when you're starting the game default loading screen will be what you have during a loading screens essentially and uh, here you can also play movies and stuff like that if you wanted to it's similar to the startup loading screen you have the same settings but in this case we don't want to uh, also over here important is um, if you're playing movies you want to have show widget overlay to set to false so that it's not going to be showing that overlay um, but in the case of loading screen we want to have a widget overlay at least i do for this case um, so we a widget overlay will allow us to have some sort of uh, interaction showing that the, the loading screen is actually working it it hasn't died it hasn't frozen and things like that uh, it is driven by the layout, so you have a few different layouts here. You can see you can classic center, letterbox, sidebar, dual sidebar. So you choose which one you want to make use of here. So center one we can, or actually let's keep the classic one for now. Um, so that means that if we want to change in the settings. We go into the classic part over here and we change our settings around here. But first of all, we want to actually have a background for a loading screen. So we go to background under the default loading screen and we want to add an image. In this case, I have called it 40K something over here. So we have this texture. So this is going to be what we're going to be using. I don't want to scale to fit. I want to fill it. I think that will be good. Um, other than that, I'm not entirely sure if we need something else. We can start like this and see what the result is like. So we skip the video in the there, darkness and we travel to the next map. And we can see that we got a screen that flickered past really quickly. To allow this to actually load a little bit further, we can go here to minimum loading screen display time, set this to five. What this will do is it will simulate that, or not simulate, it will In the allow darkness. the loading screen to take five seconds before it's actually transitioning. So here you can see that we see the actual loading screen and our border in the bottom before we're getting to the map. Before we actually saw the image itself though, we got a gray uh, placeholder image. And what that is all about is, it's something that uh, only appears in standalone. If you do the build game, it shouldn't be appearing. Uh, you can preload your uh, images just to have it actually work during um, editor testing like this on a standalone. Uh, but you probably don't want to have it activated um, later on because it will keep the image in memory, which you may not want to do. So now you can see that the image is being displayed there and we have some white border. So what is the white borders all about? Well, the white borders is what the widget is all about. So in this case, we have the classic layouts. We have a border background here. If we go and set the tint over here to black, for example, and then play again, it will be a little bit more clear, I believe, on what's happening because uh, we skip in the, the darkness and we start transitioning to the next level. You can see that we get a loading message and a throbber playing in the bottom left. So what this is is the currently uh, is the following. Uh, if we go to our uh, default loading screen here, we can see we have a uh, loading widget over here. 
The loading widget is currently set to be a circular throbber, and the circular throbber gets its setting from this category here, the circular throbber setting. So depending on which settings you have or which dropdown of throbber you want to have here or what other, you can also use uh, uh, sequenced images to have sort of like a flipbook kind of um, aesthetic as well, if you want to use that. But uh, if we have a circular throbber, we can go to circular throbber, and here we can go in and configure how we want that to look. We can change what kind of an image it wants to be, uh, we could take like these small devils, we could change the, the, the tint it will have, we could change it to green, and all of these things will then uh, be applied on the loading screen once it comes up. So these the are darkness. all configurations that you can do for uh, customizing your, your throbber to look what you want it to look like, right? Or not only the throbber, the loading screen, I mean. Uh, so in addition to that, there's also text. So you have the loading text here. That's what appeared over there. We can change that to something else we want as well. So uh, loading into level, for example, um, and, and things like that. So uh, that's the general gist of this. So you can see that there are a lot of different um, options and settings and configurations you can create here. Uh, to get it to have your sort of look. So feel free to play around with it and, and find something that you, you like. But yeah, that's essentially going to be all. In the um, dark. So it's, it's, it's working in a way that's different to most uh, tutorials I think you find. Uh, in this area because many of them try to like fake that you have a loading screen just throwing up uh, a screen before transitioning to a level and then uh, having a throbber that actually freezes because it can't actually manage with that because it's using the same thread to um, move to the next level so it doesn't actually uh, operate in parallel this plugin however lets you do that which is why the throbber keeps moving it it uses a different thread than the game thread for for your transitioning to the new level so this is why i would recommend you use this to create your loading screens anyway that's going to be all for now keep on learning take care a big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos, or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from.